So the Earth is not flat. The Earth has mountains. There are features. There are all sorts of bumps all over the Earth. And it's very hard to then somehow take these bumps on the Earth and turn them into a flat map so that humans can understand them on a map. So what humans have figured out is a good way of modeling these maps on our mountains on a map is what if we took that mountain and we chopped it up, we sliced it into all these different levels. Now each level is the same distance apart. So it could be whatever it could be, feet, meters, whatever the me measurement is. And then we can number them from sea level for something. So for example, if this mountain was here, we'd slice it 10, 20, 30, 40. So each of these intervals are each 10 feet apart or whatever it is, 10. So each of them are 10 feet apart. And it's very important to notice the numbers don't ever cross. It counts up. So here we're going 10, 20, 30, 40. So we're counting up as you get higher and higher and higher. And so the peak of this mountain is going to be something above 90, maybe not quite 100, 96 or something. It's not quite 100 yet. But that's how we can tell how high the peaks are of these mountains is by how many lines have chopped them up. And so what does this mean if you were, how would you understand a map? So for that, we've got my friend Heinz. So if Heinz were going for a walk and he didn't, he just wanted to go for a nice calm walk, he might walk all the way across on the 20. He's not changing elevation. He's just going side to side. He's staying around 25. It's not very strenuous. You're just walking on a flat surface. He's walking around the mountain. However, if Heinz wanted to really go for a strenuous walk, he could climb the mountain. See, now that he's climbed the mountain, he's crossing those lines. And every time he crosses the lines, oh, there he goes, makes it to the top. So that's a big, long climb. So when you cross lines, you're gaining elevation or you're losing elevation. And when you're not crossing lines, you're just walking on the flat. So how do we show this then on paper as well? Well, the other way we can do that is by now looking at it from the top. So from the top, we now are drawing these circles. We're tracing the outline of these mountains around and around. So when we add those numbers, so this was the 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and up to 90. Um, often they'll have what's called a contour interval, a one line that's darker to show kind of to help you keep track. So you don't have to count every single line like, ah, there's 50. So presumably 100 would be the next one that's darker. And it shows, okay, this, so let's see, here's that, oops, here's that area that's flat. So Heinz is walking on the flat. See, we can tell he's not crossing any lines. He's staying on the flat, staying on the flat. And if he wanted to climb the mountain, he's going to cross those lines, crossing, whoa, climbing up a mountain, climbing up a mountain, and now he's on the top. So it, it's just the way of taking the mountains that are tall and making them flat on the ground. Now, it's very important that the numbers, the contour lines never cross because we can't go from 40 to 20 without going through 30. Same thing we did when we were talking about weather a long time ago. The numbers, the lines cannot cross. Um, what happens, however, if instead of this being a mountain, it's a volcano? Oh, no, it's a volcano. And so... Instead, up at the top, instead of being a peak, if there's a little bit of an indentation, they're going to put those lines there. That's showing there's a caldera. That means this looks like it's going, there's a, it's an any kind of, it's curved inwards. So this is a bowl on top. So that would be a volcano's top. So what does this actually look like? Like, all right, these are my nice, beautiful drawings. What does it actually look like? Well, here's out by CLU, Channel Islands. Um, and we can see that there's this big flat area. So the lines are very far apart. It's very flat. That's where all the farmland is. And then right near Channel Islands, there's this big, what's called round mountain. It's a mountain, and you see all these steep, steep lines, steep, steep, and that, that little circle there at the top, that's the peak. So anytime you see a little circle, that shows that's the peak of these mountains. So there's a peak, there's a peak, there's a peak, there's a peak, they look like little belly buttons are peak. All these little circles mean that's the peak. So it goes up to that higher little level, and then it slopes down. So here's, there's two peaks near each other. We can see all these squiggles and where the lines get closer together, where it almost looks like just one big color, that means it's very steep. So we can tell the steepness. And so what does this actually look like? Well, here we go. This is the satellite view. So same thing, there's all this flat land, flat agriculture, and here's that round mountain. It goes straight up. Oh, there's the peak. Here's a peak. Here's a peak. So exactly the same thing. Channel Islands in this, in this little valley with all these steep mountains around it. We can see here's the ridge and the mountains. And the one last thing I want to say is that when you're looking at a topo map, one thing that you can always tell is where is there water. Because where there's water, all the topo lines are in these little Vs. Because that means it's a little valley, those little crevices where the water will run down. And they always point upstream to the top of the mountain. So here's a water area. Down here, we can even see the blue. And see, they're all pointing. Those arrows are pointing uphill. So this is the top of the mountain. The water comes flowing downhill, down the stream, and goes into the creek. So here we are. We've been looking at a topo map. So now it is your turn to try to analyze. Can you find the peaks? Can you identify these mountains? And good luck. Good hiking.